Hi, welcome to... What are we calling this thing, Leo? Summer Games Done Quick Guest Appearance Fallout 4 Special. This is... Okay, fantastic. Just rolls right off the tongue. We're joined by a speedrunner, Bubbles Del Fuego, who's going to take us through Fallout 4 in about how long, Mr. Bubbles? Uh, about an hour and ten minutes. That's pretty impressive because I spent way more time... Yeah. I'm assuming you don't like look in every garbage can, right? Is that a pro tip? No, only the ones that make me go faster. Okay, <laughs> awesome. And then also Haley, laughing, you can hear her. She's Hello. our intern. Hello. How's it going? She's going to join us, and we're all going to marvel and gawk at this amazing feat of exploitation. So are you ready? Yeah. Okay, st are we starting a clock? Or is this we're just going to go on our internal timers and say that felt fast? You can start a clock if you want. You can just use the timestamp in the recording. And <laughs> See, look at you. You've done this before. All right. So does the, like, when you're doing a speedrun, does it start, like, right now? Uh, it's going to start when I begin moving, which is when my crosshair appears. Okay. Okay. Absolutely. I have a stopwatch ready. Okay. <laughs> the pressure. I've, I've never done this before. <laughs> so how many times have you played through Fallout 4, would you say? Uh, I have, like... Only like 450 hours. 450 uh, hours. But probably like 100 times I've beaten the game or so. Wow. Not in, like I've probably reset the game about 900 times. Do you enjoy this game? Uh, no. No. <laughs> uh, okay. Have you ever taken the time to play through it? Like yes, my first playthrough was Cashmere. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, I'm going to choose a guy because uh, it's just faster not okay. like in general if i switched over to her she would talk and be all like hey my turn okay and all that stuff oh. it's not even timing method right now it's just muscle memory starts with that uh i guess I'll just, I'll just say go and that's when the timer comes all up. right go i can't wait to see you just outrun everybody <laughs> to get to the shelter you're not even gonna look back at <laughs> your, yeah, your family pretty cool <laughs> pretty cool way to get there So, uh, the beginning here, there's not a lot of ways to skip it, but these characters talk to you, and they set flags for the next part of the game. Okay. And so, if they start talking, I can talk to them, and it'll make it so whatever they're saying stops, and the next part will happen sooner. So, uh, Codsworth is going to talk, and then Nora. So, when you're looking at Fallout 4, when you first start it, is there like kind of like a shared knowledge that comes from having played other Bethesda games? Like you kind of understand yeah. how they work generally? Oh, totally. There's, a, there's many tricks that work in this game that work in previous games. Okay. There's only like two tricks in this game that are unique to this game actually. Like climbing with items and clipping through walls and stuff. Um, that's all past Bethesda stuff. Okay. Like classic Todd. Like it, it, <laughs> they have to, it just has to happen. Uh, so now I'm waiting for a... Mr. I am Vault Tech. I think his name is Vault Tech because when he goes up to the door later on, or like we'll see in a bit, he screams like I am Vault Tech. Can I help you? So I think his name is Vault Tech. So what are you jamming on right now? You are uh, furiously tapping away. You can skip dialogue with four and down. Okay. It's a neutral way to finish the conversation as fast as possible. Okay. Sure. Let's do it. Just agree to everything he says. Uh the name can be anything. But we'll make it something better because I'm here. Uh. <laughs> uh, endurance, agility all the way, and a little bit of intelligence. For you and Sean, no price. Was it hard to figure out exactly what combination of those traits was the best choice? Uh, it wasn't hard, but. I have to hear an audio cue there. There was um, the fact that we have to run around a lot. That's why endurance and agility are there. Okay. Because you'll have more AP and uh, with agility, and you'll drain less AP with higher endurance. Okay. And the higher your level up is, uh, like the higher your intelligence is, the faster you level up. Mm -hmm. And so that's where the remainder of the stats can go. Would charisma ever be useful in speedrunning since it could like give ultimate discussion? Um. No, not really. No? You'll see. <laughs> <laughs> it's not. There's, like, one opportunity to give a uh, different dialogue, and okay. that's with Virgil later on, but it doesn't even make it go by faster. Oh. Not at all. See, this is tough because I want to ask a bunch of questions, which I know that you will cover by showing us. Yeah. Like, I, 
Like, oh, what faction are you going to align with? Or do you just blow past them all together? Like, so don't tell I us. I we'll game with two different factions at the same time, so I can say that. Okay. We need to get to the vault now. Okay, so now I can run. So even if I oh. could have flipped out of the house earlier through something <laughs> crazy, uh, I would have, like, not been able to sprint. You're so. just leaving your wife and baby behind. <laughs> don't worry, they can teleport. <laughs> They're really inspiring. It's in the genes. <laughs> So he just said he was vault tech. I can skip this dialogue. Cool. <laughs> it's not even consistent at all. So there are some runs that just, yeah. for whatever reason. I could have restarted right there. That, that was probably like a 357 uh, when the loading screen starts. But it was probably like a 328 when I okay. touched this platform. Both of you. We love you too. Um... So your fastest time on this is 49 minutes, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> How did you know that? I have watched it, I believe. No way. Yeah. <laughs> I had no idea. Well, back when my friends and I were playing Fallout 4, we were talking like, oh, how many hours have you put in, blah, blah. Like, I wonder what the, the shortest time someone's done. It was only about, not that long ago, though, wasn't it? Uh, the last record I got, which is the current record, is 49 minutes and 12 seconds. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um. And that was made in like May 30th or something. Okay. So, what are the, the general rules then for speedrunning Fallout 4? Do you do it like because the random number generator, is there like a lot of like save scumming and all that kind of stuff? There um, is only a little bit of RNG in the game okay. uh, for random number generator or generation or Galapagos. I don't know. Um, so. But it doesn't really determine it too much. It's just when you when I go shopping later, it would be kind of ideal to have a few things in the shop. Okay. Uh, but hopefully they're not too far away. Okay. You want to just walk in a straight line so this doctor can follow you as fast as you can? Okay. I like how the compass just looks so nice. <laughs> <laughs> hopefully that won't be a big deal. Uh, the doctor, you can skip his dialogue also. I can talk a lot about it during this cutscene because I won't be able to skip any uh, skip it at all. Okay. Um, <laughs> what about difficulty setting? Is there like a set oh. rule like you have to play normal difficulty um, in order for it to count? Kind of, yeah. Uh, you have very easy is the fastest. Okay. Uh, where is DX story? That was open in the background, wasn't it? I think the frame rate isn't at 60, and it really should be. Cool. <laughs> Nothing happened. <laughs> this is just, uh, the game can be really unstable, and you can actually look at videos for when this game was released. If you play this game at a uh, higher frame rate than 60 FPS, um, you will actually be moving faster, and items will move faster, and since it's uncapped, it's unstable, so if there might be an area where it lags and stuff, like if there's a lot of enemies or if you're getting attacked, mm -hmm. a lot of actors on the screen at the same time, uh, you might have really slow movement speed, and then if I'm trying to like not die or jump across something or climb something, it might get lagging somewhere. So this just helps keep it consistent and okay. easy. And you can turn on VSync and use it, but uh, that would have to be like monitor specific because it kind of depends on how well your hurts work. So um, the X story is just like a program that's free to use and download, and not, we only use it to cap out the frame rate. You can use other things though, like wraps or something. But I guess the rules, because we were talking about that, uh, 60 frames per second, yeah, to keep it fair. Okay. Because if someone has, like, a beast of a PC, they'll actually be moving faster. Yeah. Uh, so that's just to keep it fair. And the timers actually have a, a script in them that connects to uh, your memory, which when this game sends a signal to your memory that's saying that it's loading something, mm -hmm. um, the, the timer will actually read that script and know to pause the timer when it's at a loading screen. Um, so this also is timed without loads, so that 49 minute and 12 second time is without any loading screens. It's about an hour and two minutes with loading screens. Uh, so yeah, this game does have some long loading screens. And uh, besides that, uh, you can't use the Pip-Boy app. 
uh, the little thing that the mobile mobile app that came out. With oh yeah, 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 yeah. Because oh. it just doesn't work on some networks or devices, and it's a lot to expect for someone to own a smartphone if they don't, and they have this game. <laughs> uh, so that's just to be fair. Okay. And how, who comes up with these rules? What's yeah. the governing body? Because some guy, there's always one guy that's always like, "Hey, I played really well, but I just didn't like cap my frame rate." Like, oh, then it's not like objectively better. Mm-hmm. It. So, yeah, if you want to have a better time than somebody else, uh, you'll have to play by the same rules as them and actually be a better player. Okay. Or just get luckier and grind out enough rounds, or and it all works out differently. So now I'm gonna start doing glitches and stuff. <laughs> All right. Uh, Best part. So, typically you would investigate your wife, who's been frozen in a not working machine forever. <laughs> and take her ring. Yeah, but by wife. <laughs> uh, oh, wait. Put those dukes away. Crouch. There we go. Yeah, I felt like I remembered you using a pylon near the start. <laughs> yeah. Ugh. Okay, what, how does that work? Now. The pylon stuff, what are you doing? So... There of course. <laughs> That's just to save like a little bit of time. Oh, oh wait, I pressed caps lock, so. Ugh. So do you know what is happening when you use the the pylon in the game? Why it acts it you know causes you to levitate and fly through a wall? Um it's so it works better with round items that when you pick up they won't slow you down when you move mm -hmm. okay so this i can move at the same speed oh that's a friendly enemy all right i'm so, always so <laughs> curious on how you figure that out uh pretty much asking ourselves like hey is that gonna work and then we try it and then we're like oh it does <laughs> Job, Todd. <laughs> it just works. Just works. But I mean, what would compel someone to think, you know, I bet if I pick up a traffic cone, yeah. I could. Because we ask ourselves, like, do we really need the Piplo? Yeah. Um, and we can get it later. Uh, when you enter a suit of power armor, it automatically gives you the Piplo, assuming that you have it. Oh. Okay. Uh, okay. Because there's one on the outside of the of the of the like power armor anyway. Okay. And then actually, I have a Piplo right now. I could pull it up, but it's invisible. But I can still use it. Uh, we thought it was just not there for the longest time, and you were just bringing your wrist up to your head. Uh, but you but can you actually can you can do stuff on it. Yeah. Access everything. It's just invisible. So <laughs> there might be a segmented like uh, speed run out there that just skips doing that because I can bring it up just my arm. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty funny. Okay, so first thing I want to do. Um, is go straight to the Museum of Freedom. And there's a few things there that's nice to have. Uh, Minutemen is the fastest faction for getting into the Institute later on. Okay. So there's that. And uh, there's power armor there, and that's very useful. Uh, you might think it's not because it's really slow, but when you're in power armor, you don't take fall damage. And we're going to fly across the entire map <laughs> and uh, not break our legs. So when you're traveling in the overworld like this, how much of your path is like critically important? Like, for instance, you went through those two trees. Is that like you have a, uh, like a certain path that you take every time? Or is there a little bit of flexibility? There, typically, up until like I got to Red Rocket, there's actually a skip that's uh, really inconsistent where you can slide, but you will break your legs in most situations. Okay. But I'm not doing it here right now. It only saves like 20 to 30 seconds probably. Um, but right here, this is like... A pretty fast route for getting into that front door and you want like four pipe pistols <laughs> uh i could be making that up but uh, <laughs> like you guys would probably have to believe me i i believe everything you I'm say i'm not questioning anything but i don't they're I not super that critical on. right now <laughs> okay if he had a minimum outfit that's good uh but he doesn't minimum outfit is plus one agility ah so and that's just luck that they might have that? Yep. But I can also get other stuff later, like military fatigues or the baseball outfit. They can be in good, the good neighbor shop later on. I remember playing this first part, and I found it so hard at the start. <laughs> You're just zooming through it. First try? 
<laughs> uh, there we go. So lock picking, is there any oh, yeah. fancy secrets with that? No. Nope. Nope. It's just, I pretty much just get lucky every single time. There's Psycho in there. I want Jet and Buff out. <laughs> I know this makes no sense. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's Jet. And you just need one Jet and one Buff out? Or I need like a, as much Buff out as I can get. Three is preferable. It just makes it so I have more endurance so when I'm running. Ah. Okay, that's two pistols. I can get more later. I can always shop and buy some, but it's just more ideal if you don't. Uh -huh. Oh, wait. <laughs> I want this ceramic. <laughs> okay. Because <laughs> when you build the teleporter later on, you pretty much start out with every material besides a biometric scanner. A uh, Sturgis can like be a, a jerk here and not turn around. So it'll You're already stop. thinking about the transporter. <laughs> yeah. So you pretty much start out with everything besides like ceramic. A little. Sometimes you're low on copper. Yeah. And sometimes you're uh, low on rubber. But there's copper and rubber right there if you need it. But there's ceramic right there in the cups, and that's like the best and easiest location. Okay. So front door. We still need the power armor. So it'll manipulate the enemies and how well they spawn if you do this instead. Like, if you go up through that back door. <laughs> okay. Yeah, this is really tricky. I'll just climb in this wall. <laughs> there we go. Oh, minigun. And how much are you comparing notes with other speedrunners for Fallout 4? Uh, it's pretty straightforward. And also, if you're in a battle before you get in the power armor, you'll go enter like a quick animation instead. And since there's no guy in that roof, you don't need to pull out the minigun right now. I went into third person and then back into first person, so there was no landing animation. Ah. Uh, and like, say, that, that particular trick right there, is that something that you figured out yourself, or you just have watched other speedruns? I did figure or like... it out, but um, sometimes people are like, hey, did you know you can do this? And then some guys are like, oh yeah, we knew that. Uh, you want to spawn the death class as soon as you can, because <laughs> <laughs> it's really not that hard. <laughs> Is there a certain order you want to shoot these guys in so they don't shimmy upstairs or well, anything? Well, you want to kill this guy last because he's always a jerk and just stays indoors. But <laughs> if you wait long enough... Okay, so... Uh, it's just inventory level up. And I want to get... Uh, action boy. Just get your speed going? Yeah, so I can just run faster. All right. And uh, the 10 millimeter pierce, uh, pistol and the stim packs are automatically bound before you leave the vault. So stim packs are at like zero or nine, I think. And the pistol's already at four, so we don't have to go into the inventory and bind it. So right here, I can just switch the pistol uh, without it having to be rebound. I'm never going to use the minigun again. Now this is going to get pretty bonkers. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I'm keeping on the power armor for a reason. I understand it's slower to move around when I'm in it. You're welcome. All right, go uh, so I'll, I'll try my best to explain this after I do it. <laughs> okay. Uh, but I'm gonna make a save file before I do it because it's it can mess up. Okay, so I'm setting up cover and then I'm releasing it while I'm in the cover. And then when I go back into first person, it wants to put me behind cover in that same spot, but I'm not in the same map anymore. So oh. I'm going to just keep going back into first person with the pip boy. And it sends me towards the origin of the map. And since I'm in the overworld, it sends me towards the center of the map. <laughs> and so I want to go towards green tech genetics for later on in the game. Uh, because I'm, that's just... Uh, you know, the next place I need to go is to Kellogg's place. Okay, that should be good. <laughs> I think this is actually really nice right here. An ideal slide. This is called a... We call this truck a cover slide. Um, <laughs> oh, they've got their own slang and everything. Okay, so I'm in the water, but it's not too bad. Um, I can just get out and come back in the suit later. 
because I do need the suit for one more later on, but I can always just run into the water and get it. I'll just have to remember it's like over there. You guys, yep. that, can, that, that could be you helping me. All right, it's over there. Yeah, it's over is there. that helpful? <laughs> just remember the landmarks. <laughs> Where would have been the optimal place to land? Right here. Right there? Right here. Because when I fast travel <laughs> to Green Tech Genetics, I want to put the armor right in front of that tree branch and then spam E on the loading screen. <laughs> okay, so now that I just, uh, because when you start loading the game, you can't move for a little bit, but you can do every other control. So you can start entering the power armor while the game's still loading and not letting you move. Okay, so now I'm going to go and get the final quest of the game. Uh, I have to clip out of here and get, okay, so I'm just going to make a hard save file here. And then I'm going to quit the game. And then I'm going to load that save file because I'm in water um, from a cave entrance. So it wants to send me to the top of the water because it ah. can't send me in the bottom of the water, but the water zone is on the outside. So I'm swimming out of bounds now. <laughs> you kids can do this at home. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. I'm just going to quit out and reload that new save again. It's very finicky, eh? It's just been a while, to be honest. <laughs> So how close to your 49 would you say we are right now? Uh, we're about three minutes off of it. Oh, three minutes? Already. And that would that would deserve a restart? Definitely. Yeah. I would have restarted in the first load, but anyway. So I rubbed against that pipe, and now I have nuclear option. Because at the end of the game, if you do the Minutemen quest line, it'll tell you to go in through that direction. Yeah. So uh, if you just go, with, go near that pipe, you'll hit the flag trigger for that quest. And so... Now when we enter the Institute, we can instantly finish the game. So now the goal is just to get the Institute and then cut out this whole second half of the game. <laughs> but the only thing that getting that quest does is put the relay chip for the Minutemen inside of Sturge's uh, inventory. So we have to pickpocket it from Sturge's. Um, can I get the jump? Nice. Um, it's not easy. Uh, so later on in the game, I'm going to be stealing a thing from Sturges. And then when I get to the uh, Institute, I'm going to bring the Minutemen in, and they're going to act like they, uh, the whole game's over. I'm going to just discover mass fusion here. Just because you rubbed up against that pipe? Yep. <laughs> well, uh, still talking about Fallout? Or <laughs> <laughs> okay. So there was a thing I could have done with that cone to like fly over that wall to get into Good Neighbor, but nah. How much time would that would have saved you? If I had, uh, if I grabbed it the perfect way the first time, about half a second. <laughs> so, do you feel like you have a pretty comprehensive knowledge base of Fallout Four as a whole, or just very when intricate? When it comes to how the game works, yeah, I'm probably the number one person that doesn't work at Bethesda that knows the most about this game. Um, but that's that's not something I'm super proud of. <laughs> so I'm gonna underflow this entire inventory. Uh, biometric scanner, nice. Uh, jet, that's great. Radaway, did they have buff out? They did not. Uh, I forgot to check for it. Stem packs and Radaway. The destroyer's left leg, the chest piece, and none of that stuff it matters right here. And two pipe pistols. Okay, cool. Is their inventory random each time for and the I, stores? Uh, I need to steal this real quick, so I'm going to make a quick save. Okay. I'm trying not to die on the way out. All right. Uh, typically, you'll press I instead. So, find the fat man, find the pistol. We don't need to bind anything else. Put that stuff on. Find the jet. Find the rat away. Find the stem pack. Level up. And get solar powered. So during the day, you'll have more endurance, so you can run more. And then that's all of Good Neighbor for now. We'll have to come back later for the memory den, but we are on our way to Virgil's Cave now. And this might make no sense at all. It, well, I'm not, None I'm of not this gonna, makes any I'm sense. I'm not going to pretend like it's, it's made sense until now. Yeah. But this is a lot of preparation. Uh, the, thing, the, reason, the number one reason we went to Good Neighbor right now is for the destroyer's left leg. If you notice, the movement speed's a little bit better. It's 10% faster with that uh, armor piece, and it's always in Good Neighbor. 
Mm. We also have to go to Good Neighbor later on for the memory done, so why not just get it, like, the fast travel location now? So, we want to discover Park Street Station as well, because we have to go there and get Nick. And the reason we're not getting Nick now is because uh, his dialogue is going to be kind of finicky. So, uh, he won't consistently behave the same way every time. So, I want to enter Diamond City and cause Piper to advance the main quest line just a little bit. Um, instead of having to jump it like 10 storylines ahead mm -hmm. uh, by directly going to Nick. So if I let Piper into DC by skipping the cutscene of Piper, like if I just enter DC and then leave, mm -hmm. uh, Piper will come in because I have to have a way out. So that front door has to open. And when the front door opens, Piper gets let in when the main story advances. And then I can rescue Nick a little bit better. But since I'm closer on my way to other goals, I'm just going to go do the, like Virgil and Kellogg before Nick. Uh... And how much of the like the speed running stuff that you're doing right now is possible on console version? Because obviously you're playing on PC. Um, console version is pretty updated. You can still clip like that. You can't cover slide because that was patched. Okay. Uh, you can do. You can't do that version of the vendor glitch with like money that I did. But there's another way, where if you just select the item, like buy an item, and at the same time sell an item. Um, you'll the selling will happen before the buying, and it'll assume that. The thing that you're getting is free. Okay. Uh, so that's not too bad. You can do that on a console pretty easily if you want to get one of any item that you want in a store. Uh, so that's not too bad. Uh, console isn't super hard to speedrun. It's not the best, though. Like, how much of a time difference is there between... Like, has anyone done a, like a uh, serious speedrun on console? It's about, like, probably 45 minutes longer, I would say. Oh, wow. wow. Maybe half an hour. So, this is, like, probably a five-minute section right here of actually optimal running. <laughs> that is actually all, uh, and this is the fastest five minutes I can do. Uh, I'm running straight to Virgil's cave. Does jumping make you go faster? Well, in a, in a sense it does. Yeah. Because if I'm going against, if, if you just think about it, like, in terms of, I guess, geometry, if I'm going across like a divot like like nobody can see my hand gestures <laughs> but uh then you wouldn't even think i'm doing any because i'm playing right now but if there's like a hole in the ground i can either run down it and then run back up right, suicide is close to me or soar across it there um, you go. yeah you can jump across it instead of having to go under it okay uh and when you're swimming you uh can that's like the ideal time to use a stem pack because if you typically use a stem pack, you will have to slow yourself down and then inject it and then you can go back to running again. But when you're swimming, you just hear the sound of it going in you and you can maintain your swimming speed. How closely do you pay attention to your health? Uh, I can let it go down to like one HP and I just won't care. Uh, <laughs> I'll know when I can die and when I can't. Uh, typically, the place in the game where the health is the furthest down is right at the end of the glowing sea here when I encounter a bunch of rad scorpions. I just run past like seven death claws in this game too, and they're not a problem. <laughs> the only enemy that's ever like a problem uh, is maybe the synths, because when I kill Kellogg, uh, I have to get inside of his terminal to get a quest, and they can just berate oh. me with bullets and make it so I can't do anything. But then I can just turn around and just shoot them, and they'll die really quick. But if I want them to be fast, they can be annoying. But there's no enemy that's going to like typically kill me in this game ever. The the run used to... Uh, it, I've been around... I've been starting speeding on this game about three or four days after it came out. Um, and played casually until then. And then that's when me and some friends like started routing, uh, running, finding stuff, uh, implementing it in, getting a lot of other feedback. Um... And it's been happening for a long time. I'm the only person that's like a current runner and has been since uh, day one. So I like know the history behind stuff. Like, mm -hmm. we used to need to get spray and pray, which is like a submachine gun that shot, shot explosive rounds, which is really good for killing a bunch of stuff. And the route used to not have that big skip at the end, so we would actually finish with the Institute quest line and uh, destroy. Uh, 
uh, what's it called? The uh, Liberty Prime at the end. And that was part of the game. But we that's all done now. And when you're doing this, like, with the mind of, like, I need to beat the record, I'm taking it very seriously, how often are you saving? Uh, well, if something happens and I reload a save file, if I made a mistake, mm -hmm. that's a that's a pretty big waste of time. Okay. So it's... I'm probably just going to restart. But if it's something like if I quick save before I pickpocket Sturges and he catches me pickpocketing him, I can like reload that quick save and try again. That's only like three to four seconds lost. Okay. Uh, it's not a huge deal. So I think I'm going to set this up here. All right. So that's, that's why we're going to Virgil's Cave first before we go to Kellogg or anything else. You would think it would be fast to like Go to Nick because it's on the way, and then go to Kellogg because that's uh, on the east side of the map, and then go south to Virgil's Cave after I've gotten both of those. But um, I just set up that cover slide, so after I discover Virgil's Cave, I'm going to make a save file on the outside of the cave for a trick later on, and then I'm going to do a cover slide from Vault 111 all the way down the map, because between Vault 111 and Virgil's Cave is Fort Hagen, uh, where Kellogg is. So it cuts out like a minute and a half of having to walk to Kellogg first, if you just uh, go from the two points around it and then fly straight to it. And you can only cover slide to locations that you've been to, like I've, uh, like I'm doing right here, like I set up cover here. My health's low. Why don't you guys tell me? Um, <laughs> we know where the power armor is. It's over there. <laughs> and Yeah, I'll need to go get that. <laughs> and so if I'm indoors, I can also cover slide towards the center of the map only. Yeah, it's on the... There's a death claw here. It's okay. I don't need to see it. <laughs> I'm just kidding. All right, save file, fast traveling back to green tech genetics so I can get the power armor and I won't die. Uh, the power armor is in the water and I have to run past some enemies, so I really hope it doesn't do the whole, like, enemies are nearby, you can't fast travel mm. stuff. Oh. Uh, because that can be a problem, but chances are it won't as long as I'm smart about it. I have faith in that you're going to be smart about it. <laughs> You seem like, to have this figured out. I just try to get to the water as soon as I can so they stop their aggro. And it's also nighttime, so the Myra Lurks are hiding right now. Okay, and it's over here in this corner. Yep, it's right there. <laughs> you guys were so helpful. Yep, it's right there. <laughs> okay. How much of this mindset that you get while speedrunning seeps into like your everyday life? Like, if you're going to the grocery store, would you be like, "What's the optimal?" To be completely route? honest, it, I am like that. Really? I, I try to be just optimal in life. It feels weird <laughs> to like brush my teeth in the shower and <laughs> stuff like that. Okay, so it's important that you go in third person, and then take out your gun, and then jump and then tap. Okay. Because if you take out your gun when you're in first person, you'll only boost once. But if you use tab, you can boost multiple times. Um, and tab is just what I say. If you pull out your pit boy, you can boost multiple times. And tab is what I bound a pit boy, of course. This should take like three uh, clicks. And I want to get to that little town to the left of those satellites over there. Okay. Oh, I'm a little low, but that's fine. Oh, I'm underneath. That's great because it'll invert me to the ground that's at the next Y position. Uh for That's all those what I usually graph experts out there, <laughs> and that was a perfect uh, cover slide because I'm right here where I need to be. So I go up these stairs. I don't go through the front door, and I don't bring dog meat on my quest or have Nick help me. I can just go through the back exit, <laughs> and instead of the front door. And this is where the pipe pistols come in handy. Oh, get back here. <laughs> There we go. <laughs> All right. So that's why you need four of them because there's one there. That there's was two gone. In, there's two in uh, Park Street Station, and there's one in Railroad. So if you have four, that covers all your needs for clipping in the game. 
And this part is where uh, I kill Kellogg. It's going to be a really hard battle. And you only need four because you can use this bucket here for this one. Is this where the synths might give you some trouble? Yeah. A little bit, if they're just annoying. <laughs> ah. Get up the fat man. Yeah. There we go. Keep going. <laughs> I'm just going to get everything he has. I want the military grid circuit board. There's always one in here. That's for the teleporter later. There we go. Okay, now I'm going to quick save my game. And I'm going to load that file that was in the outside of Virgil's cave. In the exact same time that I walk into this cave, I'm going to quick load. And the character that I'm quick loading is going to go inside of the cave. The one that just yeah. was at Catalog's place. Yeah. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so... I'll know if it worked if, um, I don't know. <laughs> uh, I should just know. My health's low. It did work. Okay. Okay, wait. I just leave now. I don't have to talk to Virgil right now. So how did you figure that part out, that you can switch the That worked in Oblivion, and they didn't fix it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let me just make sure that I have that quest. Okay, I do. Discuss my findings with Nick. That means I know about where my son is now. So I need to go help Nick now. So I'm going to go to Park Street Station and go save my boy. <laughs> so then you speedrun most of the Bethesda games then? I speedrun... Uh, I've been I've known for speedrunning Fallout 3 and Oblivion. That's what I did at last year's Summer Games Done Quick. And this year I'm going to be doing Fallout 4. All right. Uh, and I also do Dishonored, which is kind of like a Bethesda published game. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, there's a lot of there's going to be a lot of other Bethesda games at this Summer Games Done Quick, and I really suggest you guys check it out because of that. There's going to be Daggerfall, Morrowind, Skyrim, Fallout Three, and Fallout Four in that order um, oh, wow. on Thursday night, Thursday evening. If you want to check that out on GamesDoneQuick.com or on Twitch.tv/GamesDoneQuick. You have a record for Oblivion. Do you I do did. That? You did. Um, it's beaten now by people that are much. Much more dedicated and better than me. <laughs> that game is very, very hard. It's It's got a very high skill ceiling. Uh, okay, so I'm going to do a few more clipper roonies. <laughs> clipper roonies. Uh, so right here. This one's one of the coolest ones. Oops. If you go too high, it'll just uh, bring you to the lower half of the map. But you want to up to the right side of the wall, right? Oh, I almost did it. It's a little tricky. There we go. Land right on that. <laughs> Ugh. I made a quick save. Don't worry. This game's great. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. So this looks really cool. <laughs> and the trick uh, used to not be to do this. It was just to run down, open up the door, and then clip out and drop down to the door to get to the next area, but we can do that from here. Did you figure out this trick? No, uh, not this specific one. I knew of this way to do it, but there's things called setups. Oops, but I quick saved before making that jump, so. You have to jump to that door and grab it midair. So when you first got this game, did, did you enjoy playing it, or do you look at this as like a machine to take apart? Um, I chose the Minutemen quest line, and then mm -hmm. I beat the game with the Minutemen, so I didn't enjoy this game. <laughs> uh, casually, too much. There's other alternative ways, like uh, like Brotherhood of Steel is kind of fun, and Institute Ending is kind of fun. But it depends on what you like to do. What's your favorite ending? Um... The one that gets to the credits. <laughs> the uh, favorite ending is probably just the one where the Institute blows up, hmm. which is, there's multiple ways of doing it. Oh, it's the loading screen. <laughs> okay, it's because I came from the outdoors. There we go. <laughs> and so now I'm in the area that has the cell with Nick. And now you can get into his room, which so I can skip a lot of dialogue from this other character that's outside with Nick when he has that whole like skinny Malone's gonna kill you conversation. Mm. 
Oh, that was a really good clip. <laughs> I'm gonna quick save here and then jump around a trigger. <laughs> and I want him to start talking the right way. And I can reload because he can just lock in the dialogue here. Okay. And you can do it again. You want like you'll know you get it if you like your uh, compass and health bar go away. Hey. There you go. <laughs> or just compassing. <laughs> and then when he gives me the quest, I'm going to do that trick again where I load, a, like quick save the game and load a different one. That trick's called a load warp, and that is a glitch that I did find, but I found it when I was playing Oblivion. <laughs> Which is a lot easier in Oblivion. Okay, so now quick save, reload. I can reload this public works maintenance area one because that's honestly a little bit faster because I'm still inside of a cave and there's a, a fade out. That must have really changed the game when yeah. you figured that out. <laughs> that save, it saves a lot of time. It honestly does. Every piece of backtracking in the game no longer exists. So it's constantly fresh material. It's also what makes it a pretty good watch. People like people love watching this as like a speed run, but it's really aggravating because a lot of stuff can go wrong all the time. And if you grind out and you practice a lot, it'll still not even be up to you if you get a personal best because there's just so much Bethesda that can happen. <laughs> so I have Nick. I've got Kellogg's brain chip thing. So now I'm going to go straight to the memory den, and that's why we were in Good Neighbor earlier because now we have it as a fast travel point. Will you have to sit through the cutscenes in the memory den portion? Uh, yep. It's like a two and a half minute cutscene. But it's the only way that we can get Virgil to spawn. It might be something that we can skip later, like figure out a skip for, but it's kind of difficult to be honest. Uh, because there's really, like, we can't figure out another way to just load an actor. So. If we didn't have Jet at this point, there's one upstairs that we can get right here and steal. Okay, so I need to talk to Amari. You can talk far away, <laughs> and because you want to talk to Nick at the same time. And we have to wait for Nick to get his brain poked at. So I want to get a little bit more ceramic. There's like some health on this table. Uh, some there. Uh, a bone cutter is nice because it has copper in it. We can play with our boat. <laughs> <laughs> As we wait for Amari. You give yourself a little, a little break. Yeah. <laughs> So how much more would you need for the transporter at this point? Uh, we have everything. I have everything? Yep. Tell me you have a way so after this cutscene, we have to just keep going along with the plot line, I guess. So after this cutscene, we have to go talk to Virgil, and he gives us a quest to go get the Corsair chip um, because he says that they're in the Institute, and he says the only way to get there is to have a way to track the way they teleport in, and then you go kill the Corsair, get his chip, and then I just go straight to the railroad to deconstruct it. And then I tell Virgil what I did. And he's all like, okay, now you need a teleporter. And you can use one of these. Like, you need some friends to help build it. And then it gives you the prompts. Like, you can either do Brotherhood of Steel, Railroad, or uh, Minutemen. If you kill and become hostile to all of them, uh, I'm sure there's an alternate method. <laughs> but I don't remember it off the top of my head. But... Odds are you're not going to have that kind of character, and if you are, uh, good luck. But So that's why we helped up Miniman earlier. They're honestly the fastest way. We still have to do one more quest for them till they let us use the teleporter, but even that one more quest is extremely short, and you'll see why soon uh, when I get there, I guess. This memory den sequence can only be sped up in one way, and that's if you have like armor that speeds you up. I'm playing as mm -hmm. Kellogg right now, technically, because when you go up to this, is, I'm, I'm in my own brain as Kellogg. And when I go up to Kellogg later on, and I look at him, it'll say me, 
Mm. So you know it's playing Skylog. But the Destroyer's left leg that I had on before I came into the machine, it's still active right now. <laughs> uh, so that's kind of neat. Even though you can't go into third person right now, is that the only armor that's active right now? Is that it's just be? all active effect armor is still happening right now. Okay. Like you're basically just your same character, but you're not allowed to go into third person, and you're not allowed to. Uh, they, you're not playing as Kellogg. If you go into third person here, like if you force it to, like uh, with console commands, you can still see that you're still your character. Okay. But you know they wouldn't have the player do that, force themselves to break the immersion. So do you mess around with console commands much oh, to kind of time. figure out how there's everything lots works? Of, there's lots of stuff in this game that was figured out because of console commands. Um, like, there's doors in here. Like, see that door out of bounds? Mm -hmm. Like, that leads to a door that's over there somewhere, just pointlessly. I don't know why they have two doors here randomly. And I just stand here and wait. Uh, so if I go to him, it says me. And he's not even, like, cleaning his gun. <laughs> he's just just touching it. Yeah, he's he's too good for his own gun. <laughs> I don't know what this is. It's like a it's like a pig board just like hanging out. Tool rack for for blocks of wood. <laughs> <laughs> so if you go back on the road, it'll pause this cutscene and say you should stay in here. Ah. And some people get stuck here because they're just like it was a dead end. I don't know where to go. And you just have to stay here and just wait it out. You have to suck in the lore. <laughs> so this is where they tell you about Virgil, based on his memory. This is totally one of those games where the plot line is just like, um, uh, we're all out of ideas, but we can do this one thing. <laughs> or, it's, <laughs> or it's like, Kellogg's dead, how am I going to know where my kid is? It's like, well, we can go into his brain. Like, <laughs> <laughs> of course. So, I guess we're taking this trip. It feels like the story is made on one of those like camping games where it's like one person tell says one sentence <laughs> to start the story, <laughs> and then the next person passes it on. Where it's like, okay, so there's an apocalypse. <laughs> next story, next part of the story, it's like, okay, your kid gets taken. <laughs> okay, I didn't even know I had a kid. <laughs> All right. <laughs> then you go find the kidnapper, but he dies. But his but brain. You, you go into his brain. <laughs> <laughs> like the writers must have just had a great time here. What level is your character right now? I'm like four. Four? Yeah, or three, I think. I think it's four. Uh, I want to be level six because then I can level up pickpocket twice, and that'll help with the, just the luck on pickpocketing Sturges. Okay. Pretty sure that's the, that's the last level up I get. Is that a hit and a miss with the pickpocketing? It's like a... 85% success rate on Sturges or so. That's what I feel like. Okay. 80 to 90-ish. Um, once you level up the pickpocket thing twice. But before that, it's like... It feels like 40 to 50%. So it's worth it. So I like what Amari says right here. And it completely goes against everything I'm doing. <laughs> You're like, screw you, lady! <laughs> Gotta go fast! There's Nick. He's important. And we, like I did say there was no backtracking, but load warping to get to Virgil's cave from this area isn't any faster than just going outside and fast traveling there. So I'm so sorry that I backtracked about seven seconds. <laughs> <laughs> so now I'm here, and I'm going to talk to Virgil. And then this is actually my favorite segment uh, when I go get the Corsair chip. He says to go to the CIT ruins. This is where he's makes a bunch of dad noises. <laughs> <laughs> where it's like, mm, uh, yeah. Well, uh -huh. If you just listen to Virgil, it's hilarious. Is there anything worth stealing of his while you're in here? There is a mini nuke. Yeah. That, uh, I know you were later on in the game, I have to run about like a few hundred feet and then kill some people. Uh, for a quest and if I get really lucky I can just run like a little bit and then shoot a mini nuke into the air arc it across the world and then have it land on them uh, but that requires a lot of luck because mini nukes don't always fly in the same direction but there's nothing else in here that's useful there's no biometric scanner or super useful copper or anything 
And it's not even like on the way either. I only grab the bone cutter in Amari's office because I have to wait anyway. The same thing with the ceramic. And uh, with the cups because I have to wait for Preston to start talking. And sitting in your boat. Yeah. <laughs> it's important to sit in the boat. <laughs> so now I go to Green Tech. It says to go to the CIT ruins and then follow the radio station. Kind of like in Batman Arkham City when you uh, find Freeze by finding the coldest point of, uh, of Gotham or whatever. But this is like the radio thing. It's really unique to Fallout 4. They've, yeah. You have a record for Arkham, too, uh, right? I have a personal record. Yeah. <laughs> it's not a world record. <laughs> That's an hour and 28 minutes. Wow. So this is when I get the Courser. It's a really cool segment because there's some really fast explosions and it just looks like a Bourne movie. <laughs> it's Jason Bourne climbed items. So I take it this game's on a hard drive, not an SSD. You Can guessed correctly. From uh, the load time. Yeah. <laughs> Ugh. Yeah, it's so fun. This segment's great. <laughs> <laughs> Explosions. <laughs> a grenade, no. <laughs> <laughs> can you only do clipping in first person? You can do it in third, but, like, don't. Like, it's just slower, harder, pointless. Actually, running, I forgot to mention this, running in uh, third person is actually just a lot slower. The animation when you run in third person is just actually slower. What percentage slower do you think? I have no idea. I think it depends on what animations you do, like if you jump and stuff or not. Oh. This box can be annoying. It's looking like I'm getting a good box, though. <laughs> Something I love about speedrunning is how it's like an opportunity to say stuff like, oh, great box. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good box right there. But as a Corsair, it was a really hard fight. <laughs> uh, where is he? He's right here. I just need his chip. And then I'm going to do that trick again where I quick save and then I load a file. That's right here. You're not going to save that girl? No, she's, she's <laughs> fine. I blew up in the window with the mini nuke. You saw that, right? <laughs> she can crawl out and hopefully not cut herself in the glass. <laughs> oh, back to the right. pipe. So I, if you want to know how to do it, you can just hit quick load the exact same time you're going in the fade out. That's one of the things that PC can do that console can't, because console doesn't have a quick button for quick loading. I'm not sure if this game is registered with a Kinect or not, or like with voice controls, because I remember in Skyrim, when I was playing on the Xbox 360, you could use the Kinect and say things like, quick save, quick mm -hmm. load, and it was amazing, because I didn't have to pause to do that. <laughs> but... uh that was probably the most useful thing. Also, just going, like, row and shooting fire. <laughs> um, where do I want to go now? Mass fusion. Yeah. And that'll bring me to the railroad, where I can decode this chip that I just got right here. If you guys uh, press the bats button during loading screens, I can change the color. I, I, didn't, know. I didn't know that all the time. I kind of <laughs> just saw somebody doing that, and I was like, why are you doing that? <laughs> I thought it was, like, some sorcery. Nifty. Yeah, it's really useful. Oh, especially when you want to use vats on somebody. <laughs> so you're playing for fun. Do you ever use vats? Um, I did a little bit. Yeah, I liked I liked using vats. I thought it was cool. It's it feels like the same thing over and over. If you don't get a biometric scanner, you can farm that turret, and sometimes sentry turrets can drop them. Just, uh, if I didn't get one, I would have been doing that. But there, luckily, there was one at the shop. There's one at the shop, like. Like three fourths of the time, I feel. Okay. So this run. So typically in the railroad area, when you decode the chip, you have to go to the basement and then do the puzzle, uh, which nobody, which pretty much nobody knew. You all, everybody went online and you knew it, and <laughs> and then you'll be right in front of the Minutemen. But luckily, the COC point, which is if you just type in a console COC in the area that you're in, will bring you to like the central loading zone of the area. I void out, and the COC point is right in front of them, uh, which is like the origin point of the map itself. Typically, it's right next to doorways. So technically, this is next to a doorway because I went on the other side of that uh, door. If I put if I put Deacon and uh, Desdemona right next to each other, I can skip both of their dialogue at the same time. Oh wow. <laughs> Okay, and now Tinker Tom, who's amazing. 
<laughs> uh, later on in the game, I have to talk to him. He's the last person I have to talk to to beat the game. And he can just be sleeping. <laughs> and, yeah. People call him Stinker Tom. I think it's a great name. <laughs> oh, hey, Dave. Hi, Dave. <laughs> uh... So there's like plenty of ceramic, and there's jet in here too, but it's not the most ideal because I have to listen to an audio cue to know when to run out of the room. Oh. Because you can skip, if you leave and come back, you can skip dialogue. So when you start, I don't need an audio cue, I can use visual. So when he's right. Right there, okay. Is there ever a time where pressing down isn't the audio cue that's the fastest? Uh, pressing down? Or like the the, the one in the bottom when you're like talking to somebody? Oh, um, I, I wasn't in a dialogue with them anymore. Like I handed him the chip and he was doing his own thing. Yeah. And it was like a cutscene. So you can skip just a portion of him talking. Like I can't skip this part of talking. So I love how the compass is messing up Holly's <laughs> yeah. right there. So I'm getting the quest right here. Quick saving. You guys know the drill. <laughs> and this time I need to talk to Virgil, so I'm going to use the one that's at the glowing sea instead. Is there a lot of clipping to be done once you're in the Institute? Uh, there's, there's a good amount. Yeah, there's a fair amount of clipping. There's, I think, one really easy clip that anybody can do, and they still haven't patched it. And it's just funny how it works. Um, and you'll see, it just makes absolutely no sense. It's, you don't even use an item or climb, it's just basic stuff. And, where's Virgil? Is he by the pot? He's by the pot. He loves his pot. <laughs> With a big ore. Uh, I fell in a hole. Getting real personal. <laughs> So I'm just going to wait get the quest. Oh. oh, dialogue can lock up all the time as well. Like this. It's just how the game's programmed. So this is a good way to people lose runs. I'm sure it'll work. That was a lot of time lost from just nothing. Sometimes they stay still and just look at you a lot. <laughs> okay. So now I'm all good. I can go build the teleporter now. But I still need to help out the Minutemen once more. So I'm going to pickpocket surges and then help out Preston one more time but yeah I gotta get that pickpocket perk twice because it'll help me do you have like a personal favorite perk uh, just one that I find really useful is the one where you can breathe underwater and mm -hmm. never take rad damage from water that one's really nice um, bloody mess is always a favorite people like bloody mess I'm not sure if it's in this one though okay so Sturges is probably indoors right here I got his Institute Relay chip that you guys saw in there. Mm -hmm. It's a weird thing to have in your inventory. <laughs> like you would think you would want to use that earlier. <laughs> a lot of people don't know that me getting that quest earlier gives that to him. So okay. they're like, why doesn't he just give that to you immediately? But in the game, you like scanning the network the entire time or something. Okay, so I want to talk to him one more time. Because this manipulates where he's going to be when I come back here later on. Okay. So now I have to run over there, and the fastest way is from using the freedom. I have to go to Ten Pines Bluff to talk to these settlers, and then they tell me to go kill some raiders, or mostly just one lead raider, at either Corvega Assembly Plant, um... This building that's all acronyms, or like, uh, which is a little north of it, or one other one that's like uh, Walden Pond, I think. So we're going to go help them out real quick. Is there one in particular that you, you hope it's going to be? Um, it's, I think, most ideal for it to actually be Corvega. That's the most useful, uh, because the fast travel point for Corvega is... Not super far away from, like, the, the front door is not super far away from the fast travel point. And I don't even have Corvega discovered, so I would have to 
cover slide there again. Uh, Walden Pond's nice, but I would have to walk there from probably Lexington. I think that's discovered. Uh, but in all honesty, I'm not going to go do any of those things at all. I, the, it's completely slow. If I go and help out the settlers, that's way, it's a waste of time. But so there's no cell phones or anything in this game. There's no news <laughs> reports. So if I come over here and let's just like quote, help unquote the settlers, they, uh, Preston will assume that I helped them out completely, or I did as much as I could. So, oh, okay. You just do this. They were d that's, like this when you got there, right? Yeah, that's the settler quest. <laughs> that's the entire settler quest. So you talk to Sir, uh, you talk to Preston now, and he's just. I'm just gonna be all like, ah, oh, the settlers. They, uh, they couldn't be helped. <laughs> and, and and he's just like, oh, it's a shame. It's like one of the funniest dialogues or parts in the game when we figured out that this could work. Because some guy was just like, what if we just kill them instead? What'll happen? Does he give us a new one? Because we were trying to see a... Yeah. Right here. You'll hear the dialogue. <laughs> Trouble. <laughs> <laughs> oh, darn. It's really looking forward to their help. Okay, so you want to skip his dialogue, which can lock up a lot, too. And then Sturges will help me with a teleporter, because I'm such a trusted settlement member. It's like what I think about your settlement that needs another help. Can all of the settlement like side missions be completed technically that way? Um, I think it says quest failed on, uh, on the right when I do it, but at least the story still advances. So I need to talk to him one more time about like, so there's something about a teleporter you wanted to build, right? As if it's not like the way to save the world. <laughs> like right here. Some kind of machine to get an institute, like, <laughs> so you don't want to just help settlements out all day? <laughs> okay, so, oh, nothing, I don't need anything from you. You do not want to have him as a follower. That He gets in your way and wastes a lot of your time. Is that just followers in general? Uh, well, him is important because you have to talk to him later on, and there's a way that he can soft lock later and make it so the only dialogue that he says is like, hey, how can I help you, instead of, here, put this chip inside the institute and beat the game. <laughs> So here's Sturges. They're pretty close. <laughs> okay. So I can build this pretty quickly, and he acts like it's taking me forever, which is kind of funny. Hey, Sturges. How's it going? Like it's right over there. Yeah. Okay. Once the military good circuit board built this, like that, tab out, and then this. Three, four, five. This is where the copper is useful because you might not have enough copper for the wires here. Come on. think I got it all? Or no, I need a little bit more copper, so. There's this machine right here. Alright, there we go. And that music means you got it. Okay. Right here, even though it's completely built and he knows that it's built, mm -hmm. um, he can still sometimes say something like, uh, like you ready? Like you ready to do some work? <laughs> like no, stop it. <laughs> Waste like eight, fifteen seconds if he says that. No, it's like seven. But. <sighs> so yeah. So this whole run is just basically getting into institute as fast as you can. If there was a way that we figured out how to get into the institute faster than this. Mm -hmm. It would save a lot of time, because the game's going to be over in like 10 to 15 minutes, I think. Do you have like an internal clock going right now? Uh, I'm like at 40 minutes in right now, uh, in-game time. 
without loads, so probably like 55 minutes right now. But it doesn't really matter. This, I can just tell there hasn't been enough mistakes for this to be going terribly. Load the holotape. Institute relay targeting sequence, so they come in immediately. It's kind of funny how this all just works. <laughs> this whole skip was found by a really smart guy called Dr. T Chops, who uh, has broken a lot of Bethesda games. He's going to be at um, Summer Games and Quick playing Skyrim if you want to see that being speeded as well. Oh, I want to set up a, just a, a one second time saver here. Here we're gonna make a save file. This is there's three really hard load warps at the end of the game. I can't. Oh, this is the really easy clip, by the way. Just get in the chair and then get out of the chair. <laughs> Just oh. if anybody wants to do that, go ahead. <laughs> um, so quick save jet because it makes me jump farther. And I want to swag grab this door as I'm going around it. It's like Tron or something. Okay, I can reload that again. There's also a way where I can just invert my position. So I'm underneath the door and it loads me into it. Which I can try to show that off right here, actually. I just vaguely want to jump in this direction. I think it's the right way. There we go. So if you're underneath something and you void out too far, you'll just appear on the next place where there's ground. So... Setting up a cover slide there and mm -hmm. then leaving the loading zone. So the next time that I go into first person with my gun, it'll send me towards the center of the map. And the center of this map is in this direction, so I can save time by sliding up that ramp. The scope of the rocket launcher can shoot and kill you, so it's good to make a quick save right there. Quick save after I put that, and this is the hardest one that I have to do two times, and I have to do one later on at the Minutemen, at the railroad station once. I think I got the first try. Where there's like a specific frame and you have to touch it early to press quick load at the same time, because there's no fade-ins on these doors. It does fade in after you press it, and I did get it. First try, so that's nice. I haven't done that in a month. So... You have to open up the door and, like, halfway through its opening phase, press quick load. And then by the time it's fully opened, it'll register the fact that you want to quick load the game. Let's get this done. Okay. Load in Desdemona. Talk to her to skip her dialogue like we do in the beginning of the game with Nora and Codsworth. Um, it'll load us in. It, we're not teleporting to where we're supposed to because the game has no idea what we're doing right now. There's Minutemen and Railroad in the same spot. Okay. So it keeps this blue static on our screen for quite a while. So <laughs> quick save again. Load the one when we were in the Railroad Escape Tunnel because we want to warp our quick saves character here now. Because we need to go talk to Tinker Tom and tell, her, tell him to blow stuff up. And this one's really hard because this door... Is just a really tight window, but you can keep trying over and over. That might be good enough. I'm quick loading right before the fade in starts. And it's really easy to do on caves. Oh, that didn't work. It's really easy to do on caves, like I was doing with Virgil's Cave and mm -hmm. the Water District one, because there you can actually press quick load during those fade out screens, but you can't for these. I think that was good. You can tell by the length of the loading screen in the bottom right if you do get it or not. Yeah, that one's good because it stuttered. <laughs> Is this blue from a certain animation or something? Yeah, the teleport. Oh, okay. It didn't go away. Tinker Tom's not there. He's right here. Okay. He wasn't sleeping. He wasn't being a stinker Tom. Because <laughs> then you have to wait for him to wake up yeah. and sit and, and, and then he stuff. lies back down. <laughs> and you can't skip the conversation with four. Yes, absolutely. Okay. So, good there. Oh, wait. I need a quick save. That's important. Go back to this one, because this is the closest door to the teleporter inside the Institute. Before load warping was found, there was a lot of item climbing and running around. 
because you can't fast travel at this point because it, it constantly thinks you're still inside the institute and you can't fast travel from inside the institute at this point you need to get the quest from like your dad or something to do that first and or you found your son, I guess. you found load warping i found load warping in oblivion uh -huh. but somebody else uh found it for this game okay i don't want to be mean and for, uh, say i forgot his name so i'm just not gonna say it okay Did we, you coin the term load warping? I think I did. <laughs> I started calling it wrong warping for a while. Because it kind of is one, but it makes more sense if it's a load warp. There we go. It's The door is pretty much almost all the way open. You play it enough, you'll just know the texture. Mm -hmm. So have you had any kind of communication with someone from Bethesda? They, no, but they no. did patch cover sliding because um, <laughs> the day after Kotaku made a video of of like uh, made a uh, made a article mm -hmm. of my like uh, previous record that included cover sliding, and so the day after there was a patch in the game that fixed it. Oh. And so I was like, oh, thanks guys for checking my video in a weird way, <laughs> or like letting me know that you saw it in a weird way. How do patches affect like holding a world record? Uh, you just play on the previous patch. Bef I'm playing on version 1.1.3 uh, 1. 1. right now, I think. Okay. And so I can do everything. It's still I'm still playing Fallout 4. And uh, by the way, the game's done. I got the information from Tinker Tom, then I came back to the Institute, and the teleporter brought me here. And all I have to do is press this button. And I'm not sure if the stopwatch is still going, but I'll let you know when the timer runs. Does it end officially when you can't move anymore? Uh, it ends officially, yeah, when the HUD goes away okay. at the bottom. So when all that green stuff on my screen goes away. All right, so whatever that was. That's all right, the entirety Leo. of Fallout 4. <laughs> what do we have? One hour, nine minutes, 54 seconds. That, that was six seconds off an hour and ten minutes, like I said. Wow. You're a machine. <laughs> <laughs> How was that run in your usual? Uh, that was underestimate, which is better than I thought it was going to be. So okay. yeah. that was good. That was very good for especially real time and including loading screens and all the, all the long loads on a hard drive. So mm -hmm. yeah. Well, Mr. Bubbles, thank you so much for showing us your thank follow you for having run. me. Absolutely, and if people want to see more, you've got the Summer Games Done Quick we'll 2016. Happening so, this weekend. Yeah, you'll be able to see my face. You see your face. It's real good, too. You guys are missing out. <laughs> Trust us. I've worked hard on this. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. And, uh, yeah, thanks for watching. And uh, we'll see you later.